Well, hey, y'all, welcome to Country Coffee Chats with Cheryl, presented by Moore and Sandhills Voices and sponsored by Bradford Wealth Management. I am your host, Cheryl Christy Bowman, the owner, editor, and primary content provider for Moore and Sandhills Voices. Moore and Sandhills Voices is an internet blog dedicated to covering politics and current events in Moore County, North Carolina, and the surrounding Sandhills area. You can find it on the internet at www.moorevoices.net. Fair warning, it is more liberal than most political commentary coming out of Moore County and the Sandhills, so don't say you weren't warned. Well, Moore County Board of Education Co uh, Vice Chair um, David Hensley and uh, WEEB radio host J.D. Zumwalt ha are having a very public spat on social media today. Saw it pretty early this morning, um, and I'm going to get to my thoughts about that in, in a moment. Um, and I'm going to tell you guys, the first instinct I had was to laugh, because it's always funny to me when these, these wing nuts start turning on one another. But after listening to today's uh, Zoom Walt Zone that was broadcast on WEEB and, and reading some of the posts that people have been making in regards to this, it, it's not a laughing matter. It's a very serious matter. Okay, um, So I'm, I'm not going to laugh about it. Um, but before I do that, I just want to say a couple quick things. Timeline of Terror, yeah, yeah, I know Part 3 still ain't up yet. You guys have no idea how much work this is. Uh, I, I'm working on it. It'll, it'll get up when, when it gets up. Um, you know, and, and I again, it, I'm writing it mostly for the historical record. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it in my own time and at my own pace, and I'll, I'll, I'll get it done when, when I get it done. Uh, hopefully, it'll be done this week. Uh, but life happens, okay? Things happen. So the other thing that I wanted to say is there's been rumors in the community for a while now that uh, Board of Education uh, Chair, Moore County Board of Education Chair Robert Levy is very ill. Um, I first heard about this, oh, it's been a while ago. Um, and, of course, I didn't say anything publicly because, um, you know, it, it's a private matter. It's a health matter. Um I would just encourage everyone to uh, understand that uh, this could seriously impact the business of the Moore County Board of Education. Uh, not only is Mr. Levy chair of the Board of Education, but he is also uh, the head of the policy committee, and uh, so it, it could seriously, this illness uh, could seriously impact um, the, the business of the Moore County Board of Education. Um, praying for his family. Um, you know, hope hope everything works out. Okay. Uh, last thing, you know, we changed our name from More Voices to More and Sandhills Voices, and I'm getting a lot of messages about, well, you're not posting anything other than Moore County, and, and I get that, okay? Um, I've got some, some things in the works about other counties. Um, I'm working on a, um, a story about uh, Hope County specifically and about the NAACP in Hope County and how they have partnered with the the Hope County Sheriff's Department to address uh, neighborhood crime and, and the success that they're having with their efforts there. I'm working on a story in, uh, regarding um, a couple of other counties and their, their school boards and how they compare and contrast with some of, of the things that the Moore County Board of Education is doing. So I am working on those things. But you know, between the timeline of terror and the constant political explosions that are going on, <laughs> and literal explosions, uh, that are going on in Moore County, have been going on in Moore County for the last, you know, couple months. It's, it's it, you know, it, it, it might be a while before we actually publish our our, our next uh, non-Moore County related story. So, let me let me get to the point of this coffee chat, which is this, um, this, this public spat uh, going on between uh, David Hensley, who is Vice Chair of the Moore County Board of Education, and J.D. Zumwalt, who is a talking head over at WEEB. Uh, or as I like to call it, Wackadoodle FM. Apparently this weekend, John Zumwalt and his wife, Maureen Kruger, Maureen Zumwalt, whatever she's calling herself these days, uh, went on the radio and criticized the Moore County Board of Education, the current Moore County Board of Education, uh, accusing them of not making changes fast enough or, or, or not communicating well the changes they were, were trying to make. In, whatever it was that uh, I have not heard that broadcast yet. I can't find a link to it anywhere. Um, I listened to the follow-up broadcast today, and that's what I'm basing this coffee chat on, okay? I'm basing it on uh, Mr. Zumwalt's comments on the radio this morning and on Mr. Hensley's and Mr. Zumwalt's social media posts, okay? 
Um, but anyway, whatever John and Maureen said upset uh, Hensley, and Hensley went on Facebook and, 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 and called Zumwalt out as a liar. Well, my first reaction was that was, really? Really? Man's been lying, uh, uh, you know, all kinds of crap spewing out of his mouth for the last four years, and it, it didn't bother you then, and why is it bothering you now? Because now he's lying about you, and so now suddenly lying is wrong, and you know, Hensley comes back and defends himself by saying, you know, most of what we said was, was correct. Yeah, yeah, okay. Why don't you ask Jamie Bowles if he committed a felony the way that Zumwalt said he did on the air? Why don't you ask our DA Michael Harden if he, in fact, has a drug conviction? Of course he doesn't, but of course that didn't stop Zumwalt from saying so. Why don't you ask former Sheriff uh, Neil Godfrey about this explosive evidence that Zumwalt claimed he had right before a primary, days before a primary, proving that um, Godfrey uh, uh, lied to the SBI during an investigation, um, you know, and then, of course, Zumwalt never, never produced any such evidence because we all know it doesn't exist, okay. Why don't we talk about Thomas Van Camp, who was accused uh, by, by Zumwalt of entering into a conspiracy with former State Representative Jamie Bowles to defraud the taxpayers of Moore County by working together to have Bob uh, Grimacy reinstated uh, as superintendent. And the way he said that this conspiracy worked is that uh, um, Van Camp would represent Bowles in his efforts to stop the, the, pre that the school board that was in, uh, you know, in 2015, to stop them from hiring a new superintendent. That... Um, you know, Van Camp did that because uh, the school board, you know, somebody in the school system, Grimacy or, or Bowles or somebody had made a deal with Van Camp to buy some land from him for a school at an at a, at a overinflated price. Well, there's so many problems with that conspiracy theory, uh, not the least of which is that um, Mr. Van Camp never sold a single acre of, of land to Moore County Schools. Um, wasn't involved in that in any way. But But, you know, my whole point is that you know, Zumwalt lies all the time, all the time, and now Hensley is upset because uh, suddenly um, the monster that Mr. Hensley has been feeding for the last two, two and a half years is now turning on him, and, he, and he's a little upset about that. Let's talk about the actual content of what Mr. Zumwalt is saying. I don't know that I'm hearing a lie, especially in, in the follow-up that he did this morning. Now, again, I have not uh, watched, uh, or excuse me, listened to the, the uh, original John and Maureen show. I can't find the link to it. I'll, I'll get around to it. But I didn't hear any lies in, in today's um, Zoom Wall Zone for change. <laughs> but what I did hear is a uh, almost pitiful lack of understanding of how public schools operate and the policies and laws that guide that operation. Okay. Zumwalt is particularly upset over Cranes Creek Middle School. And uh, this, this has been growing up in the community uh, for um, a while now. Uh, you know, uh, videos of children fighting at Cranes Creek being posted and, um, you know, things like that. Um, and Mr. Zumwalt uh, is, is basically uh, accusing the school board of not doing enough to fix the problem and not communicating what they are doing to fix the problem um, effectively. See, this is what happens when, when you have candidates run for school board, none of whom have any understanding of education or education policy or the laws that govern local uh, um, local school boards. Okay. There are laws in place, both federal and state laws, that um, determine how schools, how public school systems must operate everything from construction of new buildings to maintenance and repair of buildings to discipline policies and procedures to contracts of employees um, to privacy laws uh, that protect both employees and students uh, from having their personal information shared to the public. These are all laws. You know, and for J.D. Zumwalt to get up on the radio today and say, oh, well, you don't have to pay attention to the law. Maureen Kruger has dug up all these ways that parents can sue and the school board can sue. And yeah, you guys can sue. You probably ain't going to win, though, and it's just going to cost the Board of Education more money to defend these crazy lawsuits. And not for nothing, but if you really are concerned about 
uh, trailers in Cranes Creek, uh, you know, the mobile classrooms, which we all are. We're all concerned about mobile classrooms all over the district. If you really are concerned about that, then you probably should not be instructing people to file junk lawsuits against the Moore County Board of Education, which will take money to defend and will take money away from those projects that you're screaming about need to be done. Now, Mr. Zumwalt didn't come right out and say it, but it's very clear from the remarks he made on the radio today that there is only one thing that is going to satisfy him, and that is the firing of the principal of Cranes Creek Middle School. He needs his pound of flesh. He wants the public shaming. I'm not sure why, to be honest. You know, he says he's talked to 25 teachers or some of the 25 teachers who have left Cranes Creek over, over the, uh, the last few years, and you know I've talked to them too. And their complaints are valid, you know. The school um, has some problems. But I want to remind everybody that it was not Melanie Jones that made the decision to redistrict a bunch of students out of Southern Pines into her school and then not provide the resources to her and her teachers to accommodate all of these new students. It wasn't her. And it's, it's not Melanie Jones that sets these discipline laws and policies that come down from the North Carolina General Assembly. A lot of parents I talked to at Cranes Creek really like this principle, really like what she's done. Some don't. But you just can't willy-nilly, okay, run around firing people because J.D. Zumwalt demands it on the radio. And you can't you know, willy-nilly run around and fire people because there's a, there's a small group of parents who are overtaking the PTA in that school and, and demanding, you know, again, their pound of flesh. You know, there are, the State Personnel Act is a law. And yeah, you know, I guess Maureen Kruger's right. The school board could sue the state and maybe, maybe have then the authority to take action. But what have you gained? Except spending a bunch of money and so, and causing a lot of unrest in the community. You know, instead of demand, demanding a pound of flesh, these people should be working with one another to figure out solutions, to, not only to what's going on in Cranes Creek, but listen here, it astounds me that this is what Zumwalt is mad that the board is not fixed on day one, okay? Because they said they were going to fix the transportation problem. It has gotten worse in the last eight weeks. Four bus drivers were not available at Pinecrest this morning. Four buses did not run. The teaching shortage continues to get worse. This Board of Education seems to have made no move, not only to recruit new teachers, but they're not doing anything to give incentive to any of the teachers we, we still have to stay. Academics have not improved. Nothing's improved. And I'm not real sure that the community at large understands that the reason that these things have not improved is because the Moore County Board of Education, whether the chair is Bob Levy or Libby Carter or Pam Thompson or Helena Wallen Miller or Bruce Cunningham or Sue Black, whoever the chair is, whoever the members are, are bound by laws written by the North Carolina General Assembly that deliberately undercut the power and the authority of our local school boards, our teachers, and our administrators to effectively run our schools. And again, when you have no understanding of, the, of those laws that govern the policies and the procedures that our public schools must follow, it's easy to think you're going to step into the job on day one and fix everything, but then... You know what? You realize you can't. You realize that's going to take time. And, and you're going to realize in some cases, you, no matter how much time you take, there's things you can't fix. You can't fix teacher pay. You can't fix the transportation problem as long as the state is, 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 is demanding that we fill our buses 95% to capacity or that, you know... We're not paying our bus drivers enough money because the state won't pony up the money or the fact that our, our children are having to go to school in unsafe mobile classrooms 
because the state is looting the lottery fund. You got a bunch of inexperienced people on that board who never, ever knew what they were getting into. They didn't see it as a means to improve public education. They saw it as a means to further right-wing cultural propaganda. And now they got the job. And they realize it ain't as easy as standing up and making a proclamation. We're going to replace, we're going to build new classrooms and get rid of the trailers. We're going to hire 25 new teachers. You know, we're going to fix all the discipline problems. We're, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. No, you're not. And the reason that public school advocates have supported previous school boards is because they understood the limitations, worked within it to make as many improvements as they could. But this school board it doesn't seem to understand, or they're finally getting an understanding of the fact that they can't snap their fingers and violate state law. And they're spending all their time hyper-focusing on policies and, and putting cameras in the classroom and trying to outlaw pronouns and, 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 and they're not addressing these real problems anyway. Because the problems, the problems that they ran to correct are pronouns and rainbow rocks and teachers playing music too loud in the classroom. That's what they're concerned about. And that's what they're focused on. But even if Mr. Hensley stands up tomorrow and makes a proclamation about student discipline at Cranes Creek or anywhere else, there's nothing he can do about it. There's nothing he can do about it. They, they need to learn to work within the parameters that have been set by the state of North Carolina and the federal government to make as many improvements as they can. And they need to start working together with their principals, with their administrators, and with the community to make our schools successful again. Now, I'm going to say one other thing about this because it really bothered me as I was listening to, to Mr. Zumwalt's um, radio show today. He spent a lot of time talking about parents of children who were being bullied, parents of children who were afraid to go to school, parents of children who don't understand why they have to see fights breaking out, don't understand how they, why they have to um, hear curse words and, and, and expletives and, 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 you know, sexual talk from their classmates and, and, and don't understand why nobody's protecting them. That part of his show actually touched my heart because I had children in the public school. My daughter was horrendously bullied in middle school, horrendously. You know, for those of you who don't know, she's intellectually disabled. And, 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 and you know, she, she was terribly bullied, terribly. And every day she asked me those same questions. And I didn't have an answer for her. And I talked to the principals and I talked to her teachers and I realized very quickly that they were doing everything they could. They were doing everything they could. But state law was not allowing them to take the action they needed to take to keep their daughter safe, to, to keep my daughter safe. And so I had to take steps that I maybe otherwise would never have taken in order to, to keep her safe. If you really want to end this kind of stuff in our public schools, this bullying in our public schools, well, the answer is not to go after individual principals or even the Moore County Board of Education. The answer is to go after the North Carolina General Assembly, Phil Berger and Tim Moore, and our representatives who have created these laws that make it impossible for teachers to discipline, for administrators to discipline, and for the school board to take action. I would also like to remind everybody that there are other children in our school board, in our school system right now that are coming home every day and asking their, their parents, why do they hate me? Why can't I be who I am? Why do they say such awful things about me on the radio and on social media? 
You see, if you care about those little kids that are being bullied on the school board, uh, on the school bus, you got to care about those kids that are being bullied and demonized because of their sexual orientation or how they identify as a gender. And Mr. Zumwalt, until you're ready to protect those children, some of whose parents you're going to hear from in parts four and five of the timeline of terror, some of those parents who are going to be asking you, Mr. Zumwalt, and Mr. Bob Levy, and Mr. David Hensley, and Miss Shannon Davis, why not only are they not being protected, but they're being demonized and singled out by adults for harassment. Until you care about what happens to them. Now your concern for all those other kids kind of rings kind of, it rings hollow to me. I wish the school board luck on this one. The pitchforks are out. And they're either going to have to let J.D. Zumwalt bully them into firing this principal or they're going to have to accept the fact that there's really not that's not a solution okay and she was put behind this principal is was put day one between a rock and a hard place and given no support by the school system and whose fault is that well that's one thing I'll give you that is the legacy school board's fault and is Dr. Bob Grimacy's fault it is Nobody's perfect. Everybody makes mistakes. But maybe instead of blaming Melanie Jones for the mistakes that were made there, maybe instead of demanding her job, you ought to be trying to figure out a way to work with her and the parents that do support her, the teachers that do support her, and find a way to affect positive change. I'll talk to y'all later.